a place I shouldn't have been. I guess it depends on, like for me, it was a lot of places I shouldn't have been, but the first place I can remember that I shouldn't have been is pulling a, pulling a gun on my stepdad at age eight. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Same thing Smoke D. Like, what's something that, that it's transpired in your life? And it, it, I don't know, you don't know where to start. He like, I don't know, <laughs> I just don't know where to start. Well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, at a time in your life where you came to a roadblock, or you came to a stumble, you came to a place where you shouldn't have been, or you came to a place where um, you it had a choice to change yeah. your life. Probably, uh, like. And how you, over, cause you, you overcame, because you're still here right now. So you overcame it. Because people are watching this show, kids are watching the show, adults are watching shows that's going through um, choices right now that could end them up in a casket. Um, a place I shouldn't have been. I guess it depends on, like for me, it was a lot of places I shouldn't have been, but the first place I can remember that I shouldn't have been is pulling a pulling a gun on my stepdad at age eight. Eight years old? Yes, ma'am. To protect my mom, right? My family come from a family of pistol shooters and guns and mean, you know, old country way type mm -hmm. deal. You know, and the men are the protectors. We're not allowed to look below the waist of the women in our family. Mm. It's a no-no. And I'm just a what I was raised to be. A protector, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's any any child, any male child, or any child. Someone hit your mom, you had an understanding of a child. And, you know, you see people with guns around you, you understand what guns can do. Mm -hmm. And so, I guess I was kind of like, <clears throat> it was more of a mental incarceration, trying to figure things out that I didn't understand, and my mind couldn't it couldn't register them because I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know the word to go with, you know, PTSD or whatever it mm. was. So mm -hmm. that was kind of my first understanding of fear because at age eight, I was fearful, but then, like, I knew in my heart I was gonna shoot him. I, I feel that way now, but my mom didn't let me. She got in front of my mom back there. What's up, mom? Um, yeah, she got in front of him. And that confused me, you know, as a child, okay, if not just somebody's beating your mom up, you won't kill them. Why are you standing in front of somebody that's beating you up, right? But it wasn't about him, it was about, about me. You. Mm -hmm. And it took me years, so those kind of traumatizing things, they, they like, psychologically, they just put you in a place, so you already kind of just set up based on the way the system has your neighborhood, the, the social security, all of these things, system, System, systematic things set up in play to even aid, you know what I'm saying, and be a catalyst for you to get, you know, to a place to where you can, um, you know, be, be be served a bad way of life. That's something, the whole time you're saying that, it's the only, he always tell me, I watch too many movies. I'm like, I've seen that in a movie, exactly what you just described. Really? Where a, a kid will pull a gun on the stepdad or the boyfriend or whoever, and the mom mm -hmm. went in front. And he was mad, the same thing, exactly the same thing. She was trying to prevent him throwing his life his away. His life away. Off of raw emotion. Exactly. And reacting off of raw emotion. You know what I'm saying? She, exactly. she was willing to save your life and through mm -hmm. no matter what you just experienced, you were still more important than that situation. Mm -hmm. but, you, but you know what, bro? She fixed my, it's here. I mean, we was just downstairs. Mm -hmm. You seen how the dudes came in. We was just here. I'm just saying this because I'm a real time thinker, mm -hmm. right? Now I noticed the man is sitting there and he done took a drink and the drink done took him. Mm -hmm. See? So he figured he smooth and he dab debonair to where he see a bunch of women over here. Maybe he drunk, maybe he blind or whatever he is, but he came wrong. His spirit was wrong. Absolutely wrong. And I reacted in a way that I don't want to react no more. Mm -hmm. You know? That incarceration, it took my smiles, it took the emotions that I wanted to use. The hug. I don't, my mom ain't give us no hugs. We ain't got time for no hugs. You better... You know, because she's trying to raise men. Right. Mm -hmm. We couldn't come back home with a loss. Mm -hmm. You go out there, you win. Don't come back home losing. Mm -hmm. You know, and that puts you in a situation to where, you know, it's unnatural. 
Because my father should be telling me that, mm -hmm. not her. And she, God bless her soul, and broke daylight to be dark to provide a way for us. And we had a great life. My mom full of bread. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't here. She didn't have time. She spent time working. And I got, you know, whoever she was mad to, I had to be scared of him until I was 16. Then mm -hmm. I really tried to kill him. Like, for real, for real, to the point she had to leave him, Right. So it's that kind of aggression that's carried over from a childhood trauma to a situation right now. I don't like to play. Mm. It's a bunch of women over here, and here you come, yo, drunk behind over here, slither, go gobble. Man, you better go. Yeah, bro. Mm. Like, yeah, go. Yeah, I don't, you don't you even know, want this. And I don't want to be like that, bro. No, I get I want it, man. A more diplomatic way to handle situations when I perceive them as a threat, right? But let me ask you a question, and this goes to all of you. Um, do you think in situations like that, it would have been um, helpful if, or hurtful, because when you're dealing with boys, it's a thin line, especially with a woman, you don't want to turn them soft. Mm -hmm. You're trying to make them into men, but like to turn around and explain to a child, you know, the reason why I did this is because of this. I don't know if your mom explained to you at that moment in time, of course, after, you know, she de-escalated the situation, it's not because of him, it's because of you. Right. You know, did she explain that at that moment in time? Because like, communication I'm, isn't usually I'm never not, there in I'm the background. I'm not sure. Family. I'm not sure. My mom is mean as a bag of rice. Well, yeah, because no, you get I'm your ass sure. whooped doing that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you doing right. that. That's that right there get your yeah, ass whooped. I'm not sure. I you think know, I just figured yeah. it out. Well, first of all, like, I didn't, no, the reason what why you I'm doing grabbing that damn gun anyway? <laughs> You're going to get my granddad and them and grandma and them whoop you for doing anything. you you going to get a whooping even though you done it. Mm. And your brother too, if he were with you, whatever, whoever in there can get it. You know what I mean? Right. At eight, oh man, everybody getting a whooping, and the dog too. <laughs> whoever he get hit, all that. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I get it. You know, uh, mom didn't explain it. My mom shot at my dad. At, I was five, so I get it. You know, like I was standing there. Why but if we're not like four. But if we're not left with our own imagination and trying to figure stuff out, because a lot of times, even as adults, when somebody do something, say your spouse, and she reacts a certain way, in your mind you're thinking that's the reason why, but it's really not the reason why, and that can make you react differently mm -hmm. instead of actually coming to her and say, why did you do that? Mm -hmm. And having her explain herself honestly, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's miscommunication in any situation, in any household that causes, you know, that outcome. Yeah. That's the reason why I was asking that. Yeah. Tim Smoe used to say, communication rules the nation. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have to have patience to want to have that. Exactly. Some people don't feel like they are obligated to tell you nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because of what they learned. Yes. Their parents didn't teach, didn't, didn't you know, Correct. talk to them. Correct. So why am I trying to do this Correct. to you? Correct. Let, let yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.